Hello, World Outreach Revival Center. Good to have you today. Sorry I'm a little bit late, but uh, it's good to have you. So we're going to wait and see if some of you still join me. I'm sorry, I was trying to meet at 12, but it just did not work. I was out of town, um, dropping, we're spending some last minute time with my granddaughter, who is now on an airplane going back to San Diego. So, um, anyway, just please keep her in your prayers, and um, we're going to share God's Word with you today. So thank you for those of you that are joining me. And uh, we'll see who you are. Uh, Pamela Clausen, Sharon McKinney, good to have you guys. And Christina Hansen, good to have you. And uh, oh, there's a few of you coming on. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the hearts. I was just uh, running a little bit late, and Tammy looked at the clock, and she says, it's 12. I said, oops. We were on the interstate coming through Nicholson at 12 o'clock, so we beelined it here. Um, hello, everybody. Kate and Woodard and Nikki and Tina and everybody's talking to everybody here. So, um, Jim, good to have you. Uh, Elizabeth Irving, good to have you and, and others. So, thank you for joining me. Just going to give it about two or three minutes, give others a chance to come on and just share just a little bit of God's Word with you. I hope it encourages you today. It's a very encouraging word to me. Um, last night, if you didn't get a chance to watch the service last night, um, a very powerful word God gave to me, uh, a parallel of uh, Jonah and a parallel of Paul, both of their uh, ship rides comparing to the United States, the condition of our society. So you might want to listen to that message. Very powerful. Hello, Rose, my sister. Hello, Robert Myers. Uh, we have been missing you, my friend. I hope you are doing okay. Um, it's good to have you online with us, man. And we'll just see who else shows up. Just a couple more minutes and we're going to get started. But thank you for joining me. And, uh, Let's just say a prayer. We're going to go ahead and, and move forward. Father, I thank you for each one that has joined us today online and that we can uh, uh, study your word together and learn together and grow together and be encouraged together. And we thank you, Father. And I ask you for your Holy Spirit to be on me and your spirit of wisdom and counsel and understanding to rest on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, Billy, my sister-in-law. Uh Again, last night's message is one that you probably want to go back and listen to. Um, I'll say this, that I, I had nothing to preach. It was one of them days. It was a distracting day. Uh, many things coming against my mind. And about 5, five o'clock or so, I'm not even sure because I just had a meeting at 5.30 at the church. So probably quarter to five, I sat down and opened my Bible for the 10th time that day. And it jumped right off the pages to me. And I said, wow. So if you get a chance to listen to uh, uh, Wednesday night's uh, service, you can enjoy the worship if you'd like, but especially the Word. I want to share something with you today. So we're going to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Genesis, chapter 1. And uh, hello, Rose, and um, share with you uh, just a couple of scriptures here. It says, In the beginning, God, or Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And this is, when God speaks, things move. You know that as well as I do. Um... The Bible says in the New Testament, out of nothing he made everything, just by speaking his word. Then I want to go over to chapter seven, chapter 2, verse 7. It says, And the Lord God formed a man out of the dust of the ground. You imagine he, he formed him from the dust of the ground, and then God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and made him a living soul. 
So here's your plan of creation. God looked at the earth. Darkness was covering the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering or brooding over it. And God began to speak and the Holy Spirit began to act. Very powerful. Now, chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Don't you eat it nor touch it, lest you die. Most of us know the end result of this. Don't you listen to me closely when I'm about to share. Eve ate the fruit. I, I want to just take a little detour here real quick. Do not enter into conversation with the devil. He's too smart for you and I. He will manipulate, he will twist the words, and he will twist truth. We can't converse with the enemy. We have to speak God's word and let it go. That's what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane, a whole nother message. Verse 7, the eyes of them both were naked and they knew, uh, were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and hid themselves. They made aprons and God, they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day and um, uh, they hid themselves from God for the first time and fear and all these things came in, shame and everything came. They brought death into the camp. That's what happened. Their disobedience brought death into the camp. And you know that from Adam, death has reigned from Adam all the way to Jesus Christ. Everybody knows that. What did God have to do between Adam and Jesus? He had to bring the law to bring clarity to humanity what's wrong and what's right. Because they had lost their intimacy with God. You see, when you have intimacy with God, you know what's wrong and right. When you don't have intimacy with God, you got to read it somewhere. It's pretty simple. Because when we're close to him, he begins to deal with our heart about the smallest things. So our hearts have got to come to that place of intimacy. But for them, from Adam to Jesus, there's this giant gap there that God says, I'm going to have to put the law to show men what sin is. And Paul even said that law that came that was good brought death to me because it exposed what sin was in my life. Verse 7 of, cha of Romans chapter 8, he says, oh, or chapter 7, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thank God it's through Christ Jesus. So we understand then that Adam and Eve's sin brought death and that God created them and they messed up. I think everybody on here understands that. Now I want to take you to two of the scriptures in the New Testament, the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And I, I hope you find this quite interesting because I find a lot of comfort in this knowledge. I really do. So we're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and then to uh, Matthew 25. So Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 4, let's go to 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according, listen closely now, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. Now, I want to go to Matthew 25, verse 34, and they'll come back in a minute. Matthew 25, verse 34. Just hang with me. Matthew 25, verse 34. Then shall the king say to them on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit, listen closely, the kingdom of prepared for you from the foundation of the world. From the foundation of the world. 
before planet Earth was formed is the foundation of the world. When he formed the planet and began to place everything in it, that's the foundation of the world. Do you know who that was before? Adam and Eve. It was before, and let me go back to Ephesians. Please just hang with me, and I'm going to wrap this up in just a moment. But, but I just want you to hear this because it's the coolest thing. Ephesians chapter 1, go on back. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. Let me ask you a question. God created Adam out of the dust of the ground. It was a sinless society. God breathed his own breath into Adam. He removed a rib from Adam and created Eve. He walked with them in the cool of the day and talked with them. Adam was a son, or at that time, the son of God. Not the Savior, but a son of God. Do you suppose that at that time Adam was holy and without blame before him in love? I have to guess he was. Adam and Eve were walking in purity and perfection. See, the thing God didn't take from us is freedom of choice. He'd never do that. And Adam and Eve were instructed by God, you want to stay walking like this, just do what I say. Don't eat from that one tree. They believed the word of the enemy, a lie of the enemy, more than the word of God. They ate the fruit, and guess what? Adam died. Eve died. You and I die. Do you ever wonder, this is like a sideline, why death hurts so bad? Why it hurts when someone that you love dies and the grieving is terrible? Well, here's why. Because you were never created to die. God didn't put any chemical balance inside of your body when you grieve over death that he that something in your body would start functioning to make you feel better. No. The only thing that is there to help us through the death of somebody is that one called Jesus Christ. Because Adam and Eve were made to live forever. We have to have him. Now, Here's the point I want to bring to you of this whole thing today because I, I found it quite interesting. He creates Adam and Eve. They're holy. They're pure. They walk right with God. They're not trying to get close to God. He came to visit with them in a natural form. He was there, the substance of God. And they cut that relationship and death took over. Therefore, women have pain in childbirth. Therefore, men and women die and get old. Therefore, our bodies get sick and we fight many things. Therefore, the ground stops producing fruit and vegetation the way it's supposed to. Thorns and thistles and poisons and all these things came because of Adam. The lion is a meat eater. Do you know you were a vegetarian back then? We didn't kill anything to eat. We didn't kill anything to clothe ourselves because it was a world of love. So when they brought death, they brought death. And with death came sin. Selfishness and my will, pride, and all the things that go with it. And so we're called sinners for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. All of you know what I'm talking about, but here's the coolest part of this. He said in Ephesians, he said in Matthew and other scriptures, before I made the world, I made the solution for the problem that was going to happen. Before I created planet Earth, I had the plan for Jesus to come and forgive the sins of the world that had not even happened yet. What a God that says, I'm going to create people. I know what they're going to do. I know they're going to mess. 
up everything. So before they mess up, I'm going to have a plan in place to fix their mess up. Most you and I, if there's a mess up, we go fix it as best we can. God says, before you mess up, I'll fix it. Let that sink into your heart a little bit for a minute. Before we mess up, he has a solution to fix it. So for some of you, you know, you say, well, we'll talk about salvation for just a minute, man. You know, I did this, I did that, I'm a failure, I messed this up, I messed this up, I spent time in jail, I spent time in rehab, I spent time in divorce court, I spent time, you know, abusing people, I spent time being mean and a liar and deceitful, and, you know, I'm all of this. And God said, yeah, I knew that was coming, and I had a plan for you, his name is Jesus and all you have to do is receive my gift and repent of your sins and accept it and your sins are forgiven and you start back over again. Wow. And here's the coolest part of all that. He knows our life inside and out. And my wife said this to me some time ago and I, I never forgot it. She said, our future is his history. He just knows. He knows you. He knows me. Now, Pastor David, that's great for salvation. Thank you, Lord. It's an exciting thing that God had a plan for salvation before we sinned, before Adam and Eve sinned. How about take it a step further? God has plans for your life that are solutions to the mistakes you're going to make before you make them. Did you hear me? That's what that means. When you personalize it, Scripture says, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. He says, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts, the plans I have for you, says the Lord. You know all these Scriptures. Before you blew it, he said, I've got a plan to bless you. i got a plan to get you out of the mess before you mess up. What a God. That'll do things like that. <laughs> it's crazy. But that's who he is. Now, I'm just going to speak personally. Sister Tammy and I have, you know, we've been in ministry now many years. We've been married for how many years, Tam? 40, 43 years of marriage. We've been through a lot of different things. And you, once you've been together a while or you've been in the ministry a while, you can look back and you say, wow. God did have a solution to that problem even before the problem came. He's way ahead of us, guys. He has the solution to our issues and our mistakes and our problems already in order. Well, Brother Dave, I'm going to do this tomorrow because I'm going to be mean tomorrow. I hate that you're going to do it. But no matter what it messes up, God has a solution already prepared if you follow through with it. You shouldn't follow through with it. But my point is, we all make mistakes. We've all failed from time to time. And it'd be nuts to think that God gives up on you because you fail. God says, no, I have already got the plan laid out. Laid out for you. My, my, my. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a, um, a quick story to you. Sister Tammy and I used to own a mobile home, and I'm going to close with this. And I'll never forget this. This was uh, We were young, and I would say young and dumb maybe, young and uneducated. I'm not sure. But we had a mobile home, and uh, I love my mother. So my desire was to give her that mobile home to live in. You know, we're going to move on. We're going to rent a house and eventually do something else. And the mobile home was almost paid off, and I felt pretty good. It was a nice home. We lived in it for several years. And I'll never forget the day that we got a phone call. And the phone call was some uh, bank organization that had purchased our loan. And they said, look, our records show that you're 19 payments behind or something like that. It was an absorbent, ridiculous amount of money. Long story short, we didn't know what to do, so we tried to find all of the records. And back then, there was no internet. There was just paper copies. And 
I don't know if this ever happened to you, but when you store stuff in a shed, this, these little things called mice can get inside some of your paperwork. And so I called them up and I said, look, the, uh, we, we've got almost all the receipts, but there are some uh, uh, papers we lost because some mice got into our boxes. How's this for coincidence? Every receipt that we produced, they said, oh yeah, we show record for that one. But every one that the mouse ate, sorry man, that's what you owe us. And long story short, we should have went to court, we didn't know. I was there the day that the sheriff came and they took our home that we had almost paid off and drove it down the road. Now the Bible says, touch not my anointed. We belong to God. We were broken hearted. We had thought we had a place that my mother could be comfortable in. That thing went down the road. Now, fast forward a few years later. I'm managing some property for some people in Picayune. They're out of town. And my mother says, David, I want that house that you're managing to live in. I said, well, Mom, you know, they, how are you going to get it? She says, I want them to own or finance it. Now, this couple was retiring. They were older. And she says, I want to go buy that house and pray over it. She prayed over that house. She said, call them up and ask them if they'll own or finance it. I said, okay, but I don't think they will. I called them up. Guess what they said? Nope. David, I can't own or finance that. We're in our 60s. Your mother's in her 70s. No one in their right mind is going to own or finance a house for a 70-year-old woman, and we're in our 60s needing retirement. So I told her, Mom, I'm sorry. They said, no. She says, I'm going to keep praying. One day, a few weeks later, we're driving, and she says, bring me, bring me by that house. I want to pray over it. So we walk in the house, and she starts praying over the house. My phone rings. And the owner's on the other side, and he says, David, I guess I have a soft heart for widows. Would you tell your mother that house is hers? Now she needed a down payment, and she had an old broke-down building that I put together over in Nicholson. I think she sold that thing within two weeks. I don't have any idea how that happened except for God. Listen, now I look back. And you may not know this, and some of you might, but there's a subdivision in Nicholson called Greenbrier. It's got a lot of drugs. There's gangs over there. It's a very unsafe place. That was where I was going to place my mother because we lived over there. It was the first location we come. We didn't know it was bad. I mean, there's little few people didn't have much over there. But God knew the future, that it was going to turn into a drug-infested dangerous place for my mother to live by herself. See, even though I was done wrong, God had a plan for her to have a brick home right in the middle of Picayune that was much safer and much nicer. What a God. You see, even before the problem, he had a solution he connected me with some people that owned a property that would be willing through prayer to own her finance for her. Knowing that I was going to want to give her the trailer, knowing what the bank was going to do and that they were going to steal from me. And a son that says, I want to try to help my mother get a safe place to stay because my father's with the Lord. This same son was able to help my mother get a safe place to live, but a better location, a better home in Picayune. God lined that out. Do you understand? He is ahead of our problem. If you're a Christian, you can blow it a thousand times. Tell me something. Someone says, well, you don't know how messed up I've been. Well, do you know how messed up Adam was? He destroyed the whole planet. <laughs> Think about it. He destroyed the whole planet. All of it. All of God's creation Adam polluted it and destroyed it in a single stroke. And what did God say? I got a solution for that problem. <laughs> Come on. 
And you think your mess up is that big? Oh, no, it's not. Our mistakes are that big? Oh, no, they're not. You didn't destroy this whole planet. You might have destroyed a little piece of your life, maybe hurt somebody else's life, but God says, let me show you my solution for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts, the plans I have for you, says the Lord, and they're good. Hmm. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Lord. Oh, what a God. So be encouraged today that no matter where you're at or what you've done or what you're going to do, God, before the problems, already has the solution. So what is my job then? To say, God, I give you the problem. Cast all your cares on me for I care for you. Throw your care on him and say, God, now just guide me to the solution you have for my issue. That solution might be just to wait. That solution might be whatever. But he has the solution. If God said, before I make the earth, I'm going to look and see how bad my creation is going to be. And I'm going to set a plan in motion to fix the mess that they're going to do that they haven't done yet. How much more does he look at you when he has the hairs of your head numbered and be able to say, I know you're going to make some big mistakes, but I've got your life already ahead of you. And if you'll follow me, repent, come after me. You will find my blessings to guide your every footstep. Huh. Wow, what a savior. Sister Tammy and I look at so many things in our lives and our minds are just blown because we have seen God do what God does. Even this, this past year when Sister Tammy says, you know, we both felt for her to work in the church and we didn't know a coronavirus was going to hit. We had no idea what was going to happen. So she loses her job, she comes to the church, and we're standing by faith, and coronavirus hits. The first thought is, oh my God, we're all going to just shrivel up and die. How are we going to survive financially? My paint business shut down. The church looks like it's shutting down. What are we going to do? But God, he had a solution, and he sustained us all the way through. That's who he is. Stay faithful to him. He says in his word in Deuteronomy 28 and many scriptures, he says, if you just do what I ask, love me and do what I ask, I've got you. I've got you. Well, day of Pentecost, Peter does his little preaching thing and all the people say, men and brethren, what do we do? to get out of our mess. He said, repent, call upon the name of the Lord and be baptized for the removing your sin and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. The promises of God are yea and amen. You are loved. Brother Dave, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't need to know. All I know is before you went through it, he had a plan. How do I get to the plan? I got to have the right attitude. Did you hear me? Because if I don't have the right attitude, guess what? I'll never see the plan. How do we get the solution from Adam and Eve? We have to have the right attitude and receive Christ. How do I get to the plans God has for my life when I mess up, even when I'm a Christian or problems come my way? We got to have the right attitude in the problem and go after Christ. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Father, I pray that you will bless each one online today that we will carry your word, that we'll be encouraged today. That you, Lord, have the answer before the problem. I like what everybody's putting on there. You might write this down somewhere today. Tammy likes to write on the mirror with lipstick, I think. Write, but God. <laughs> well, I love you. Thank you for letting me spend time in your life today with a word of encouragement. But God has a plan already figured out. So we just have to go after him and cast our cares on him. I love you. We will see you tomorrow at noon. Be blessed. 
Oh, remember, Saturday, 8 o'clock is work day at the church, 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Okay, now I'm done. See you later. Bye-bye.